Okay, look at it, number three from the vertical motion worksheet from yesterday. Uh, suppose a five-foot chandelier falls from a hundred-foot ceiling in the Capitol building and that you are six feet tall and standing directly under the chandelier. So map will not, or drawing will not be to scale, but you'll get the idea. So here's our... Uh, chandelier hanging down and then 100 feet well not 100 feet from the chandelier but uh, the ceiling is 100 feet tall you're 6 feet tall and so there's our our picture chandelier is 5 you're 6 the height of the ceiling is 100 and so we got to figure out, like, well, how do I, how do I count for all that? And there's a couple different ways to do it. <clears throat> you need to figure out where where ground zero is going to be. I think the the technical term is is datum. Like, where do you want to start this problem? Where do you want to call zero? Like, you get to pick, um, and so you can pick wherever you want. I I think there's two good picks. You could pick the floor, that would be one pick. But you could also pick the top of your head. That way, when your equation goes to zero, it lands on your head. So, do you have a preference on which one you would want to do? Your head? You can argue it either way. Uh, let's see what else does it ask. How long do you have to get out of the way? How fast will it be traveling when it hits you on the head? And then a different setup if you're only five feet tall. Um, so, yeah, let's make, let's make our ground... Again, I think datum is the fancy word, but that, that's going to be ground. That's what we're going to call um, S equals zero. So we get, to, we get to pick where S equals zero is. And so we can pick the floor, and, but then we got to figure out when the ceiling or when the chandelier gets to six. But it'd be easier if we picked the top of our head. That way, when the chandelier gets to zero, that's when it will hit our head. So that's the tricky part of this problem. I'm going to pick the top of my head because then I, I think, I mean, the math's going to work out all the same anyway. It's just, I think, easier to set up like this. So as always, our position equation is uh, 1 half AT squared plus V0T plus S0. And then we start filling in the things that we know. Uh, let's see, all of these are feet. So this will end up, A is negative 32, so negative 16t squared. V0, I don't think someone's throwing the chandelier at us. I think it is just falling. It just says falls, so I, I think we can assume that V0 is 0. No one's up there intentionally trying to throw the chandelier at your head. And S0, so this is where we have to be careful. S0 is how high the chandelier is from your head, and that would be 89. But that makes sense. It's got to fall 89 feet to hit your head because it's five feet down and you're six feet up, so 89. All right, what's the question? How long do you have to get out of the way? So that means... Find time when S equals zero. So when the chandelier is right on top of your head, how long did that take to happen? So zero equals negative 16T squared plus 89. 16T squared equals 89. Moving things around. Square root of 89 over 16. I mean, I guess you could leave that as an exact answer, but we're trying to figure out like how many seconds you have to get out of the way. So I think I want a, a decimal answer here. Uh, again, the plus or minus, except the minus doesn't work, so we can kind of stop worrying about that. 2.358 seconds. So is that enough time? I guess it depends on when you see 
if you're if you're looking at it and you see it start to fall it's probably plenty of time if you don't see it start to fall well I don't know I hope I hope you see it in enough time to get out of the way <laughs> it doesn't take long <clears throat> But you're quick, and it's, hopefully it's not a huge chandelier. So just, you just step to the side, and you're, you're good. Oh, it's five feet. It's five feet tall. We don't know how wide it is, I guess. It's going to be pretty heavy. <laughs> it is, it's probably going to be heavy, yes. <laughs> Part B, if you do not duck or get out of the way. Wait, ducking, though, doesn't seem like a good plan, though. Like just, You're just delaying the the inevitable and it'll be going faster when it hits you so don't duck if anything stand up taller so it's not going as fast when it hits you how fast will the chandelier be traveling when it hits you on the head so we want V um, at we already have our T at T equals 2.358 um, so V of T is dS dt so negative 32t, and that's it. Yeah, that's the derivative, negative 32t. So if I plug in 2.358, dot, 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 then I can just do 32 times that time. 75.472 feet per second. Seems fast. It does not ask us to do this, but I'm just curious. Thirty six hundred seconds in an hour. Again, not required, but how fast is that in miles per hour? Yikes. Fifty one miles per hour. So that's that's gonna be a problem. A deadly problem. Um, do I need to do part C, or can we? Are we good from from there? Because uh, it's the same problem, but you're five feet tall. So, how much faster is it going? A little bit faster, Rachel. Oh no! In fact, you could. Well, let's see. How did it? How did it ask the question? Uh, so the question was if what if it is it supposed to be negative or not? Um, how fast is it traveling? So I think you're right. I think officially the velocity is negative 75. But the way the question was asked, how fast is it going? That sounds more like speed. And speed doesn't have a sign. So I think we would be okay with either one. Its speed is 75 feet per second. Its velocity is negative 75 feet per second. So I think as long as you were careful in how you answered, you'd be okay. But that's a really good question. Number 16 on the same worksheet. What is the smallest initial velocity? So find V0 that is required to throw a stone 49 feet up to the top of a grain silo. So find V0 so that uh, I guess our maximum S is 49 feet. So how fast do you have to throw the rock so that it gets 49 feet in the air? Um, let's see. So S of T is, we're in feet again, negative 16 T squared plus V0, that's what we're looking for, T, and I assume we're throwing it from the ground, so S0 is 0. We're starting on the ground. We're going to try to throw it to the top of this grain silo. Like, remember, we're trying to throw it into the silo. So how fast do we have to throw it so that it makes it up over the edge there? 49 feet up. Okay, so when 49 feet, so when S equals 49, what else do we know there? Um, 
What's the velocity at the top? Zero. So I think that's going to be our, our key here. We don't know time, which usually we find time, and then that helps us the rest of the way. We don't know how long it, that takes to happen, though. Um, let's see. So V of T is negative 32T plus V0. And that alone, that by itself doesn't help us much. Let's see. I think we're going to have to use both of these equations. So when S is 49, that'll go into this equation. V is 0, that'll go into that equation. And we'll see what that gets us. So 49 equals negative 16t squared plus V0t. And 0 equals negative 32t plus V0. And, and those go together because that's at the at the top of the of the flight, at the top of the of the parabola, at the top of the throw. So I've got two equations and I have two unknowns, t and v zero. Um, so now this is an algebra one problem. Let's say that v zero is 32t. And plug that in for V0. So 49 equals negative 16T squared plus 32T times T. So that would be 32T squared minus 16T squared is equal to 16t squared. So t would be, this is an easy one to do without the calculator, uh, 7 fourths or 1.75. Oh, but that's not the answer to the question. I mean, that, that's helpful. That's, that's what t is at the top. But I need to figure out what V0 was. But we can use this equation, V0, 32 times 1.75, whatever that is. Or you could leave that as an answer, actually, if you were just wanted to leave it. But we want to know how fast, how fast we have to throw to, to get that thing up there. So 56 feet per second. And again, for my own amusement, that's uh, 38 miles per hour. So that's not bad. Most of you could throw 38 miles an hour, I think. <laughs>